Welcome to Nature Sketch Great's Koaloa Ula step-by-step -step painting instructions video. In this video I'll be showing you how to use the Nature Sketch Great step-by-step -step painting instructions to paint the Koaloa Ula. First, collect your materials and make sure they're ready to go. Remember, this is just a sketch. Relax, take your time, and don't worry too much if you think you made a mistake. Let's get started. Step one, transfer the image to the watercolor paper. So place your transfer image onto your watercolor paper and line it up. And then put the tape on the top of the transfer image and tape it to the back of the watercolor paper. Go ahead and place your graphite transfer paper light side up, dark side down onto your watercolor paper and fold it down. Now you're ready to start transferring those lines. Go ahead and start anywhere you like. I like starting left to right. Transfer a couple of lines and then check to see that they are actually transferring and that they're transferring at the right darkness. So I like that. Just go ahead and go through and transfer all the lines by just drawing over all the lines. So just tracing the image with a medium pressure. Put on an audiobook or some music and just relax. And if you get interrupted halfway through or partway through or at any point, you can drop this and go and do something else and then come back to it when you're ready. You don't have to finish it all in one sitting. So go ahead and go through and transfer all the image lines. Now that all these lines are transferred, go ahead and remove your transfer paper and remove the tape from your image, watercolor paper, and transfer image. That didn't come off very clean, so I'm just going to throw that away. Usually I reuse it. But I will reuse this paper. This transfer image is great to protect your painting while you're painting. And use your kneaded eraser and knead it a little bit if, if it needs it. And remove some unwanted marks. I've done quite a few unwanted marks. I probably put too much pressure from my hand onto the paper. Let me just remove a few there. But this is a sketch, so I'm not too worried about it all. Just remove it a little bit, clean it up. Rubs it, rub it right over just gently. There we go. And when you're all done, you can move on to step two. Step two, paint in the wettest, lightest layer of koola green, yellow, brown, and pink. First mix the koola green. Take one drop 23H sap green. Make sure to mix it by shaking it. Sometimes the color pigment settles. One drop and three drops of 1H Hansa yellow light. Mix that up as well. One, two, three. your water brush and mix the color. Testing it on your paper. It's pretty dry but we're going to want a very wet color to paint in first. Be adding it to the leaves, the flower bud, the supple 
the staminal column, stigmas, and thin stems. And if you can't tell in the image in your step-by-step -step where to put it, you can always refer to your final reference image. Test this out again. Keep it really light to start. Watercolor, it's much easier to work from light to dark than to try to reverse any dark marks. So starting lighter, you can always add more. Looks good to me. Very, very wet. I'll start adding that in to all of those areas. If you get outside of the lines at all when you're adding your paint, don't worry too much. Just sketch. It does not need to be perfect. It's just a fun practice painting. try to keep the edges wet to prevent any lines when the paint dries. It might create a line. That's fine too because we'll be adding more paint and lines and watercolor add character to your painting. So don't worry too much if you end up having unwanted lines from where the paint dried. Next, we will mix the coat a little, a little yellow and paint it onto the inner petal edges and the center of the flower. Take one drop of the 1H Hansa Yellow Light. And two drops, that's fine because I'm not mixing it with anything. I mean I have more paint here. So pull a little bit to the side so I don't have to add too much water onto my palette. And make sure that's really wet. Test it on my paper. And then add it into the inner petals just here center. Flower center. Not a whole bunch. Now mix the Koaloa Ula Brown D and paint it onto the C capsule and the main stem. The 24H Burnt Umber. One drop. And I want that pretty wet too. And starting very light. And test that out on your strip. And add it to that seed capsule. stem, that's hairy stem apparently, and as I'm doing, filling these stems in, I see I forgot this tiny stem in here with some green, so I'm going to clean out my brush, pick up a little bit of that green again, dab it on my towel, and then apply it. The last part of step two is to mix the Koaloa Ula Pink 
So we'll take the 5H Quinacridone Magenta, shake it up to make sure it's well mixed, take one drop, add plenty of water, again starting very light and wet. I'll test that on my paper again. It's pretty concentrated. This is a very bright color, so pull some more away and add some more water. Dabbing it onto my towel and then applying it to the flower petals. Time picking up paint, dabbing on my towel and adding it here to the stamen. center of the flower of the stamen. It's just an initial layer here. And when you have that in, you can move on to Step three, you want to make sure the different parts dry before you add more paint. Step three, add drier, darker layers of Ko'olua Ula green, brown, and pink. Make sure you fill up your water brush whenever you need. Turn my paint palette around. And I'm gonna want the drier of the two colors of the green. So we get the one that's more concentrated or drier, has less water added to it. And I'm going to add it just like I see in step three, in the image in step three, just kind of around the lines. Like there's some inside too, but I'm going to start with the lines on all of them, and I'll just do a little bit more on the inside after that dries a little bit. And then on the lines of this leaf here as well, a little bit on the stem. large leaf. If it's hard to follow the small picture in step three, just go ahead and refer to your final reference image. You can pick up a little bit more of the B, the Kola Ula Green. Now that these are, this is dry, just going, looks like it needs just a nice wash over it. So I'm just gonna add another layer of that slightly darker green. Dabbing it off onto my towel before applying it to my painting so that I don't get too much water onto my paper itself. And I'm just gonna add that different places, mostly the leaves, just because I don't want to add it on the entire thing, but just to 
different parts you can see in step three that are a little bit darker. Don't forget to dab it off onto your towel every time before applying it to your painting. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of the Koola Oola Brown F. My palette's getting a bit messy. Test it, make sure it's dark enough, it's a little too wet. Don't put any pressure on your brush. And dab it off into your towel and test it again. I'm just gonna add a little bit more paint because it just got a little too wet. And I want it a little darker, so I'll just take a tiny bit and add it without adding water to it. Mix it up, try it out on my paper, and I like that. So that should be able to add a little bit of shading and definition, dabbing it onto my towel to make sure it's not too wet. So that I can control that paint a little bit better. It's too wet, it's just going to go all over the place. test strip. Let's use G which is a slightly more concentrated color and add it to the places that you see in step three in the image. Making sure to dab it off on your towel before applying it to the image itself. dry and move on to step four. So take a little bit more of the H Kola Ula pink and it's the drier more concentrated color so it has less water added to it more paint pigment and I'm going to add it as I See it in step four in the image in step four. I can also refer to my final reference image if I need to. And I'll add as many layers as I need to get to that level of color. Making sure to let it dry in between. Now this is dry, I'm just going to add a little wash over it, so a little bit of a medium layer color, not too much, so then you won't get that transparency. 
I bet just a tiny bit too much. I just wanted it in some small spots here. Should have tested it out on my test strip first. That's okay. It's kind of in a darker area when I've had more shadow and less light hitting it anyway. And it's a sketch. And don't overthink it too much. Just adding a little bit. And I'm going to let this dry and move on to step five. Step five, add the 005 ink lines. Use the 005 black micron to add outlines. And you can do that referring to your final reference image and the image in step five and your transfer image as well. You also will have some of those transfer lines there that you can just draw right over with your ink. And use it to add some light line details, stamen, and some on the flower petals, and to outline the common name and the scientific name as well. So I'm just gonna go through and add all those lines. When all the 005 ink lines are added, move on to step six. Step six, add more drier, darker Koaloa Ula green and brown layers as needed. Just make sure they dry in between layers. So I'm gonna add a little bit more water, just a little bit to my Koaloa Ula brown. Before applying it to my painting, I'm going to dab it off onto my towel. And then I'll apply it to the painting as I see in step six and in my final reference image. I rinsed off my brush on my towel with a little bit of water and it's clean so I'm getting a little bit of the Koaloa Ula green. I'm going to start adding that in as well. If this is still wet, just be careful. It's pretty dried on mine. referring to step six and the final reference image and dabbing off onto my towel after picking up paint from my palette. Like where that's at so I am going to go ahead and let it dry and move on to step seven. 
Step seven, add thicker ink lines. The O1 black micron to add lines to the flower as seen in the final reference image and in image A on step seven. We'll want to go ahead and write that scientific name, the smaller of the two names in the bottom. Trace over that one more time with my O1 micron. Then I'm gonna go throughout and add just a few of the thicker lines, not the super thick ones, but kind of the medium thickness as you can see in 7A. Once you've added all the O1 lines, go ahead and move on to the O8 micron pen. O8 micron pen, black. I'm going to use it to fill in the common name here and thicken some of the lines as seen in 7B and in my final reference image. And at any point, you can go back and add more paint and ink lines, just make sure that your paint dries in between layers. These pens are waterproof, so you can go back as many times as you like till you get this to the point that you like it. This is your sketch, you make it yours. I think I like where it's at, so I'm going to stop there. Great job. You've created a painting that only you could do. Next, you have a few options what to do with this painting. You can punch holes in it and add it to your sketchbook. You can frame it, you can gift it, but also make sure to add it to our Facebook fan up page. I'd love to see it. Thank you for joining me. I hope you relaxed and had some fun. Check out the Nature Sketch Crate website at naturesketchcrate.com for future lessons and sign up for our newsletter for updates.